Hi, Pat. It's so good to have you back on the Living Fully Show. I can't wait for you to share your story as a visionary, as an author, as the founder of Gutsy Women Win, Win. What you are doing to help women really step into who they are is exciting. It's it's inspiring. I can't wait to share your story. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Vera. It's so wonderful to see you again. Yeah. So let's dive right in. So how about you tell us who you are? And tell us what inspired you, the journey to get to where you are now, where you are the founder of Gutsy Women Win, you're the author of the book, and you work with women to really inspire them to step fully into who they are. Yeah, well, let me, I don't even know where to start with that question. (laughs) But I have been doing coaching uh, primarily with women in leadership positions. I have been a huge advocate my entire lifetime Uh, to help support women step into leadership roles in two particular areas. The first one happens to be in the area of business because I'm a firm believer that we need more money. We need more money to be able to have more power in the world. And the second area is in the political arena. We need legislative change. Two really, really important critical things for me that I remember so early on in my childhood when my mom and I used to sit at the kitchen table and we'd read the paper and I'd, I'd start visioning what it is that I wanted to be when I grew up. And mm-hmm. I looked at the one ads and at that time there were actually one ads for jobs for men and jobs for women. And the jobs for men, when I looked at the you know, explanations about designing and developing and working with people, and they were all really exciting and fun sounding jobs while the jobs for women were all the jobs that were taking care of people, such as teaching and nursing. And I looked and I went, mom, I don't understand this. All the jobs for the men are the ones that I want. And she goes, <laughs> This world isn't fair. And I said, well, it needs to be fair. And so that's when I when I reflect on that question, that is the very first instant I knew that I wanted women to have an equal opportunity as men in many different ways. And then eventually as I went into the business arena, which is a big part of my bank and worked in a predominantly male-dominated organizations such as electronics and technology. Mm-hmm. I just kept seeing inequity all along the way. And so in many, many different ways, primarily along the lines of volunteerism in many different women's groups and serving as on the Commission of the Status of Women to change the status of women here in my own county out here in Northern California, I've just been an activist for women my entire lifetime. And I continue to do that. I do that on an individual level by coaching women. I put on a women in leadership nine month program to help women step into their power, to find their voice, to be able to really speak up for what it is that they want in this world, because damn it, we deserve it. (laughs) And that's why I think is this whole me too movement is just something that is so wonderful it, I mean, very sad, but so wonderful to watch because I think it's spurring a, a lot of us into more action and deeper action and really being able to find models to be able to use their voice. So that's a little bit about my story and why I founded Gutsy Women Win and why I do what I do. So it sounds like this was something that was calling you forward since you were a child, since you were at a young enough age to see that there were discrepancies, things that were different between men and women. And for you, you felt a calling, an inner desire to make that different, to change that. So what were some of the first steps that you did? And for our viewers and listeners who may be feeling that own sense of, I know there's something here for me to do, what would you recommend to them? What, especially since you listened to that voice of yours. So what were some of the first steps that led you down this path? And what would you recommend to others? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really great question because a lot of times, you know, people come to me saying, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what direction to head into. Um, you know, wh- what, what should I be looking at? What should I be thinking about? And the place that I direct them to, the very first place is I have them go and do a couple exercises and ponder around what was it that brought you joy as a child? Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I feel if we get in contact with that, that really is who we are naturally. That really is what brings us 
joy. And I was talking to an associate of mine who recently uh, left a company and has gotten into teaching. And she said, it's so ironic because when I graduated from college, that's what I did. You know, I mean, that's what I studied was teaching, but then I got redirected into this arena, but now she's back again. You know, just like me, I majored in psychology and sociology because I loved human behavior, but I couldn't find a job in that field, so boom, I'm off into business. But many years later, here I am coaching, which is all about psychology and sociology. So one of the things that I would strongly encourage women to just really take a look at is what is it that brought you joy and passion and love and made you happy when you were a little girl? And then connect with that. And certainly it may not be that same form, but every single day, every single day, do one little thing that brings that forward for you. I like to call it our bigger game, you know, what it is that we're up to in the world, you know, for that bigger difference that I believe we all have a yearning to make. And what's interesting too is is to take an inventory of the life experiences that we've been through as well. Um, Many of our viewers and listeners have some really powerful life experiences, things that the challenges they've had to overcome, the losses that they have gone through. There's such powerful learning in all of those experiences. And then looking at the triumphs too, what what worked well, where, when were you the happiest, what were you doing? And you start putting the pieces together. So what you're recommending is really go inward, look at what it is that you love to do, that, that inner child of yours, and then connect the dots with some of your life experiences. So that's what you're doing now. So tell us a little bit about what is it that you do specifically? Yeah, well, I have done for the past 15 years, I've been in my own business when I left corporate America. And I have done a lot of executive leadership and team coaching and development inside of companies. But several years ago, I had one of my dreams, one of the things that brought me joy when I was a little girl was writing. And I got totally distracted with that. (laughs) And at the beginning of last year, I was able to publish my first book called Gutsy Women Win, How to Get Gutsy and Get Going. And that book contains a model that women can utilize to try to figure out exactly what we're talking about here. You know, what, what is your bigger game in life? And what is the hunger that has to be fulfilled in your compelling purpose and the comfort zones that you need to, to leave and the allies that you have to find because you don't have to do it by yourself. I think sometimes that overwhelms us a lot taking a look at the how versus really staying in touch, you know, with that, with that why. So I do, um, you know, again, coaching, helping uh, women find their voice and stepping into their, their power. I do it one-on-one. I do it in groups. I have teleseminars that I offer. I do uh, webinars. I do workshops. All, it takes all sorts of formats. One of my strengths is a learner. And so as a learner, yeah. I cannot really do any one thing. It, it, I have to bring a huge variety into my own life. Yeah. And as a learner, you want to teach as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for, for, the, for those that want to go to your website, it's gutsywomenwin.com. So I recommend that uh, you go to her website, you see what's available, check out her book. It's all on her website at gutsywomenwin. How do you, the visionary, take care of you? So here we are, we're, we're striving, we're working, we're, you know, we're really showing up for other people. But the important thing for, especially one of my messages is we have to take care of ourselves. We can't show up for others if we're not taking care of ourselves and giving back to ourselves. So what are some of the things that you do, Pat? Yeah, well, one of the things that I do, I actually started a a really hardcore, not hardcore, hardcore is a horrible word, but I started a really great regimen for me. And what I do now, what I'm actually in the habit of doing is I'm, I get up in, in the morning and I get dressed and I get out of my house and I either go to the gym or I go running. It's, I I can't sit still for a long amount of time. So meditation for me mm, doesn't, doesn't really work a lot, but I use running and I use walking. as as my meditation but it's so critical to be able to get outdoors to do that I have also changed my eating plan over the past I'd say nine months and I've lost some weight so I carry myself better and I carry myself more confidently sleep has always been a critical critical thing in my in my life to be able to get a really good night's sleep to be able to feel energized throughout my day and then I 
I also do, I do something that I'm doing today, is every now and then I'll take a day off and take myself out to a museum or some mm. something that will culturally stimulate me to be able to get some new ideas, to be able to take a look at things through a different lens, which I think is really important for all of us. And I sustain myself with my friends and my family. Wonderful. I love the idea of taking a day just to go explore something new, to be inspired, not getting together with the girls or another business owner, visionary, just go off on your own. I love that idea just to go to a museum. You know, that's something that I've never done. I, I usually go by the water. I go in the woods. That's where I find inspiration. But I love the idea of doing something cultural, something where you can immerse yourself in someone else's perspective too. And, and gain your own new perspective. What a great suggestion. And I love that you are taking care of your physical well-being as well. It's so important, isn't it? It is, definitely, without a doubt. We cannot sustain our game if we cannot sustain ourselves. Absolutely. So what would you want our visionaries who are listening to know when it's hard? When it's hard and you're grinding and you're not seeing the results. What has been your experience? What have you learned? What would you like to share? Yeah, I tell you, it, um, it is, isn't easy, and I'm sure you know it, and I'm sure your listeners know it too. Um, really going after what it is that you feel very passionate about, that you feel that you are really here, that you feel is the best use of you, can sometimes be, hmm, well, as you say, it can be hard. And a couple of things that I do when it starts getting hard and I start questioning, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? What's the whole purpose of it? I actually turn to my friends. I have this great thing set up with a couple of my girlfriends, and that is that as soon as I st it starts feeling hard or as soon as I don't feel, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not worthy of this or, or I don't have the right skills for this, I just call them up and I say, tell me three things that are really, really good about me. And so they say, one, two, three, and I just say, thank you. And I hang up the phone and that's our entire conversation. But it reminds me because we forget, we forget what our assets are. We forget what our strengths are. We forget how damn good we really are. And that we have to fulfill our purpose. We have to have the best use of us be in action in this world, not only for us, Perrette, but also because we're acting as models for other people. Because once people see us do what we do and, and see the joy that we bring into, into our work and into, into our play, people want some of that. So they start doing that in their own lives. So you can start this whole chain reaction without even speaking to other people, just merely by being present in what you do with your passion and your energy and your love of life. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So again, her website is gutsywomenwin.com. Pat Obuchowski, reach out to her if you have questions, you're curious about what she does, you're interested in her vision and mission, do reach out to her. Pat, it's always a pleasure to spend time with you. I thank you for sharing a bit of your journey with us. It was a tiny, tiny bit of it. So that's why I want to encourage those who are curious to go to your website at gutsywomenwin.com to find out more. And obviously to go back to our past episodes too, because there's some great nuggets there as well. So thank you so much for being on the Living Fully Show today. Thank you. You're more than welcome. You take good care. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.